Today we're going to be installing the LDO Orbiter 2.0 extruder on my i3 Mega. The main reason I'm doing this is because I do want to print faster with the i3 Mega and I've often felt that the Bowden setup on this machine is quite limiting, especially when you've got a print with a lot of small intricate parts and it's doing a lot of retracts. It's always just turned into a bit of a mess for me. So let's crack on with the installation. It's actually surprisingly very, very easy. First, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. With state-of-the-art facilities to handle things like PCB etching, CNC machining, injection molding, and even 3D printing, PCBWay are committed to quality and affordable solutions for your PCB and manufacturing needs. PCBWay can handle it all from prototype to mass production. Visit PCBWay.com today and check out their very competitive pricing and turnaround times. All you need to do first of all is I've got the Mega X carriage here, so I'm just taking off the fan mount and also the hot end mount. Thankfully someone's done all of the hard work and they've published a mount for the Mega X carriage for the Orbiter 2.0. I've just printed that off. Then the only thing that you need to do is you need to measure the tube that connects the hot end to the LDO Orbiter 2.0. So what I'm doing is measuring how much that tube goes into the Orbiter 2.0. And I'm doing the same thing for my V6 hot end, adding it together and then that is the length of the tube. And then that is it. You can see it just mounts back into the X carriage and then you bolt in the Orbiter 2.0 on top. And then for wiring, all I've done is I've just run the wires back round through the umbilical cord and I've taken off the wires for the old extruder and then I've just spliced them wires together. So you can pause it here to see the correct colors of what you should be matching up your LDO extruder to the current wires on your i3 Mega extruder. The only other thing I've done is just a extruder calibration test. Um, I'm not gonna show you how I did this because there are millions of videos online already for this. I'll put a link in the description to Teaching Tech's complete guide on how to calibrate your 3D printer within that is the E-step calibration. Here's a really good example of why I decided to do this upgrade. I'm trying to print some Gridfinity grids here. Once it gets to the upper section of the print, it becomes a lot of small movements and that just results in a bit of a retraction mess when I was trying to print these on the Bowden setup. You can see here, this is exactly the same filament and there is very little stringing because I'm using now the direct drive. It's got much better control over that filament. This was a very quick and easy upgrade and it's massively improved the print quality of this i3 mega now the orbiter 2.0 maybe a little bit expensive this was i think about 65 pounds there are cheaper direct drive extruders that you can put on this thing i really love the form factor and the precision that's gone into the orbiter 2.0 so that's why i bought this one you can see another little upgrade that i made uh, to this printer as well is a flexible pei sheet now the reason i've done this is that the ultra base is actually a very good bed the only problem is is that to remove large prints you have to let the bed cool down. Now, I'm someone when I'm doing prototypes, uh, I'm quickly iterating and I need to get the part off and start another print relatively quickly. And I found that it is really difficult to get PETG parts off of the Ultra Base when it's still hot to the point where I'm actually using a spatula and I'm just kind of jamming it into the bottom of the part to try and get it off. And I'm probably losing the position of the, of the bed by doing that. So I switched over to a flexible bed, the magnetic base. I've just adhered it straight onto the glass bed. I have seen some people remove the Ultra Base and then put the, the magnetic pad onto the middle sheet. But honestly, I'd rather add a little bit more mass to the bed. That's gonna help it be more consistent with its temperature. And also it's gonna help it to be a little bit more rigid because honestly, this steel plate uh, at the bottom here is not very thick. And I think once heat is applied to it, it could probably easily warp. So this has definitely breathed some new life into this printer. I was thinking that I was gonna be replacing it pretty soon, but Honestly, it's printing really well now, and I can actually print it much faster with the Orbiter 2.0. Compared to what I was on the Bowden, I was usually running it around 60 to 70 millimeters per second. Now I'm printing up to 100 millimeters per second, and that is at a 0.4 layer height with a 0.6 nozzle. Now the extrusion is not perfect, uh, when it is pumping out that much volume of filament, you can see slight bits of under extrusion. I think with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, probably 0.3 millimeter layer height is, is probably a safe spot for this. But with a Bowden setup, 
it was really difficult to push that amount of filament through this hot end. And also because part of that force from the extruder pushing it into the Bowden tube, that force was contained in the Bowden tube. And I found that whenever I did want to you know, increase the speed, increase the volume that it was printing, my stringing would get more and more and more. And I'm guessing it's just because all of that force is being held in the Bowden tube. And it's very difficult to get the retractions right. With a direct drive extruder setup, uh, it's just much, much better. My, my retractions are so much better now that I've upgraded to, to this type of setup. And again, you know, kudos to the Mega X carriage because it makes it really quick and easy to swap over from a Bowden to a direct drive. Just 3D printed some new parts for the plate which attaches to it and you're good to go. Also, another little thing that I've just added is a just a webcam arm here. So I've got this set up now so I can see the print properly. I've got the focus in the middle here so I can just see exactly how it is printing, which is really nice. Now there are probably two more upgrades that I would like to make to this printer because I've realized that actually mechanically it's good. Uh, it's nice and sturdy. And I think that I can probably improve this even more and try and get it printing up to the speeds of my Voron Point 1, which I usually run at about 120 to 150 millimeters per second. The things that I wanna do is next, I would like to switch out the control board. I would like to go to Clipper and I would like to just have a touch screen set up like what I've got with the Voron 0.1. So then I don't have to faff around with, you know, connecting it to Octoprint, to my computer and running up and down and, and working with it. I'd really like to have it's set up here. Because the SD card reader has broken on this many years ago, I can't actually load up prints with that and it, it's just nice to be able to do it over Wi-Fi. So upgrading the control board is something, but I really don't like doing too much electrical stuff and crimping wires and all of that. So I'm kind of putting that off for now. But the other thing I would like to upgrade is to try and push this even faster. I think that the V6 hot end is starting to show its age a little bit. I did, I know I did recently upgrade this from the V5 hot end, which is definitely an improvement, but I'm thinking maybe a Rapido, maybe just a normal Fatus Dragon, which I've got in a Voron uh, Zero. Maybe I will upgrade that one to a Rapido and I'll put the Dragon into this one, or maybe something like the, the Goliath, which looks like a really interesting hot end, but it's probably a little bit overkill for maybe a machine like this. But yeah, I just would like to bring this up to the print quality and the speeds on my Voron Zero. And I think it is possible with some upgrades. So thank you for following along. Remember to like and subscribe. I will put all of the 3D printed files and all the information in the description below. That is it for today. I'll catch you later.